Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to the ICM 2018 closing ceremony. 121 years after it was held for the first time at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, the International Congress of Mathematicians has finally come to the Southern Hemisphere, to Brazil, here in the city of Rio de Janeiro. It's been four years of intense preparations and, of course, some challenges to make this year's edition an unforgettable one in the history of mathematics. Nine days of encounters, lectures, discussions, and panels with one common purpose, the infinite exchange of ideas and mathematical ideals. And now we've arrived at our last day, and we would like to salute everyone who has been present this year, people from the most diverse countries and distinct institutions. We would like to thank you all for this union here in Rio de Janeiro and for your total commitment to mathematics. And we hope that this has indeed been a memorable addition. Together, we have taken enormous steps to make the study of mathematics more global, more known, and to spread even further across the planet. For Brazil and for Rio de Janeiro, this has been an immense honor and a unique opportunity to strengthen the progress in mathematical research that is happening here, coinciding with a new era of advancement and visibility for the science of mathematics in Brazil as it is in other developing countries. We feel confident that the seeds planted here over the last nine days will yield results for many years to come. The 2018 ICM is organized by IMPA, the Institute for Pure and Applied Mathematics, and by SBM, the Brazilian Mathematical Society, and supported by Brazil's Ministry of Education and Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation, and Communication. The ICM has, uh, 2018 has as its official sponsor BNDES, the Brazilian Development Bank, and of course our co-sponsor, Firjan Sezi. Indústria é transformação e a Firjan ajuda as indústrias a transformarem o Rio com a Firjan Senai, Firjan SESI, Firjan IEL e Firjan CIRGE. Viva a transformação! To open this ceremony, we would like to call on stage our hosts for ICM 2018, Professor Shugefumi, Shugefumi Mori, President of the International Mathematical Union, Professor Helge Holden, Secretary General of the International Mathematical Union, Professor Marcelo Viana, Chair of the Organizing Committee of the 2018 International Congress of Mathematicians, and of course, Professor Paolo Piccioni, President of the Brazilian Mathematical Society, SBM. And to present the ICM 2018 report and to make some final remarks, I'd now like to pass the microphone to Professor Marcelo Viana. Thank you very much. So it is the privilege of the chair of the organizing committee to make a short report about the Congress just for the benefit of the audience, to give you an idea what lies behind the organization of such a meeting. So I'll start with the information about the Open Arms program, 
which is uh, the travel grants program set up by IMPA and the Brazilian Math Society to support the participation of mathematicians from developing countries, and which was also uh, helped by a generous contribution by the IMU. We had about 1,500 applications for support from all over the world, all over the developing world, out of which uh, 630 travel grants were awarded to mathematicians originating from 73 different countries. This was the international branch of the Open Arms program. There was also a branch for Brazilian mathematicians, uh, which offered, which had 450 applications and offered 255 uh, travel grants uh, for uh, mathematicians uh, whose affiliation is in Brazil. And we managed to cover applications from 22 out of 27 Brazilian states. This is, uh, these are the final numbers concerning participation of uh, in this Congress. We had a little over 3,000 participants, uh, counting those who registered online before July 13th, those who registered uh, here on site, as well as accompanying persons and a, a few guests. So that's a little over 3,000 participants in this uh, Congress. This is the geographic distribution of those participations <coughs> with percentages uh, corresponding to different continents. Of course, a large part of the participation came from South America, including uh, Brazil as well. The total number of people who attended the Congress in uh, one way or the other is much higher. It's about 10,000 people. That includes not only the participants, but also staff, our colleagues in media, uh, as well as uh, the school kids and teachers who uh, came uh, for the public lectures and the public program activities in Pavilion 2, which were over 5,000 in over this, uh, this period. And of course, among the attendees, we also count on a very special place, our volunteers, of whom I will talk a little bit more later on. We had about uh, 300, uh, 3,900, almost 4,000 uh, submissions of abstracts, out of which 600 and 910 were selected and were distributed between short oral communications and posters, as uh, indicated on the screen. <clears throat> this is a snapshot of the uh, activities that took place, uh, prize and special lectures, plenary lectures, invited section le lectures, short communications and poster sessions, not counting he here the five contributed discussion panels that also uh, took place, as well as many other activities, as, as you know. So this is a few figures for you to have an idea of uh, the order of magnitude of the scientific program. Now, we, we were particularly happy with the outcome of the public program, which, cons which, which was supported on five uh, public lectures given by the mathematicians listed on the screen and uh, which came together with activities for school kids and their teachers and in fact for the society as a whole that were offered in Pavilion 2. And these are the figures for the five days during which we had these activities taking place here. Of course, one of the highlights was the, were the award ceremonies. We already had two, and very soon we'll have our final award ceremony for the Lilavati Prize winner. These images correspond to August the 1st, when we awarded the Fields Medals and the Nevalina Prize. And here we have the winners for, of the Gauss Medal, the Chern Medal, and the Lilavati Prize, which will be um, handed on uh, very soon. Now, a few 
figures, you'll probably forget them, but I hope you will appreciate them when you see them to give you an idea of the magnitude of the Congress. This is the area for restaurants and for the exhibition hall. Information about the registration hall and uh, the poster sessions. Rooms, lecture rooms, as well as the uh, mezzanine where we had a few of the receptions uh, took place. This picture, I think, is from the uh, Brazilian reception on August the 1st. This room where we are staying right now, it's a surface and number of capacity, number of seats. This is slightly smaller than the one we had planned, uh, but still, I think it was perfectly suitable for the activities that took place here. This is information on catering and um, the space uh, available, which turned out to be a, a very privileged uh, meeting point for the participants. Now, these figures are an estimate by our staff of the number of things we ate or drank while we were here. I cannot vouch for the accuracy of these estimates. The numbers seem a little bit staggering, but that's the information the professionals, the experts, uh, the estimates they, they provided me with. We had, especially during the opening ceremony and then also uh, during uh, the social dinner, the collaboration of over 200 artists. What can I say? Lots of numbers. Um, just maybe you can fix on the very first one, putting this Congress together involved the collaboration of over 1,500 people working here, uh, both workers, volunteers, ourselves, uh, uh, the, on the organizing committee, the staff, our agency. Uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, really a, a quite a big enterprise. Now this is uh, a series of information I'd like to give you concerning the uh, visibility of the Congress. This information concerns our website. We had over 90,000 visitors and a total number of page views that is in excess of 400,000. Uh, this includes both the ICM website and news about the ICM that were posted at the IMPA website. Here is the distribution of the IPs of those visitors per country. Again, Brazil, of course, takes the largest share, but as you can see, uh, we had uh, visits from pretty much all over the world. These are the countries of origin with the higher percentage, highest percentages. And now the presence in social media. And as you can see through um, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, we managed to reach 2.4, almost 2.4 million people with information about the Congress. And this is not counting the impact we had on the press, uh, the, the, the mainstream press, through news about the Congress. <clears throat> um, one thing that we were not quite sure about is uh, how successful the uh, mobile app would be, and I think the results were very encouraging. Uh, almost 2,000 uh, users downloaded the app, both from, from Android and from, from iOS. So I, th I think we, the app really proved to be a very viable alternative for providing information to participants about the program and uh, about the activities taking place here. And I'm entering the uh, final <coughs> segment of my presentation where I would like to thank a few people. I mean, if I just told you that 1,500 people contributed to to this uh, event, uh, and I cannot thank them all, of course, but at least I would like to mention here the uh, organizing committee, which was absolutely fundamental in all the um, 
uh, in all the decisions and in all the processes. And actually, the, the list is not quite complete because in an informal way, pretty much the whole staff of IMPA and of the Brazilian Math Society was added to the organizing committee. But anyway, I would like to say a special word for Juliana Bresson, uh, as she was the very first one to join the, uh, this team over six years ago, and during the process grew to become a sort of a ICM super manager, taking responsibility for a broad range of decisions, and uh, eventually making my, my life much, much easier than you might think, because she was doing the hard work and I was just taking the good bits of uh, the process. Uh, and I'm very grateful to all of our colleagues in the organizing committee. <clears throat> but last but not least, there's a group of people to whom we are particularly thankful and uh, I want to mention them uh, very specially here. Uh, our volunteers, please stand up, the volunteers. Pessoal, vamos ficar em pé. Todos os voluntários em pé. I don't have to tell you what they did. They, they did they make, make it, they made it look easy which, of course, it wasn't. And my final thanks to you all for coming to ICM in Rio de Janeiro and for making this surely a memorable occasion for all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Marcelo Viana. The ICM 2018 has already left such a positive mark on the history of mathematics. This event has gathered mathematicians from 114 different countries who have built a strong connection through ideas, research, new perspectives, theories, studies. The power to overcome and our collective strength have been the key concepts of this edition. And I hope you'll agree that Brazilian culture has also been strongly present, welcoming us all, involving everyone in its riches, in its rhythms, in its singularities. We indeed have a lot to remember from these past nine days. For 121 years, every four years, men and women from all over the planet break down frontiers and together create a story of a land where knowledge, overcoming the limits of intelligence and passion are the main characters. In 2018, for the first time in history, a country in the Southern Hemisphere has been the host of mathematics' greatest celebration. Multifaceted culture, the abundant nature, and that unique joy of Brazil and Rio de Janeiro proudly welcomed the International Congress of Mathematicians. Since this is the first ICM ever held in the Southern Hemisphere, we should not forget that right now we are in Rio de Janeiro, we are at the opening day of this Congress, and we should enjoy the uh, lectures that will come in the following days.
most of the work we have done over the last six years in building up for this moment was devoted to promoting popularization of mathematics. I want to thank you all for coming for this Congress and to wish you a very pleasant stay in, in the marvelous city and in Brazil. Enjoy Rio, enjoy ICM, and most of all, enjoy mathematics. Over nine days, a magnificent panel of human diversity worked together, exchanging ideas and visions of mathematics. Developing thought processes and relationships that can interpret and give new meaning to the world. In this mathematical territory, challenges build the way in an incessant search for understanding nature, understanding the universe, and above all, understanding ourselves. Creative minds can fly high. They break time's rational clock, change the course of history, and influence generations. And suddenly, unknown universes become essential. And now, to present the Lee Lavati Prize, I'd like to call Professor Shigefumi Mori, President of the International Mathematics Union. The 2018 uh, Lee Lavati Prize is awarded to uh, Ali Nelson for his outstanding contributions towards increasing public awareness of mathematics in Turkey, in particular for his tireless work in creating the mathematical village as an exceptional, peaceful place for creation, uh, uh, education, research, and the exploration of mathematics for anyone. Now to our winner. There was nothing, just a field and one person's ideas, dreams. This place is not supposed to exist. I had no money. People gave donations, trusted me. Why should they? A math village where you teach math is not supposed to survive. And societies don't give so much value to mathematics. 
So it's, it's a miracle, you know. It, it's like it's like throwing dice and uh, getting double sixes each time. <laughs> I am a professor of math at uh, Istanbul Big University, and also I am the founder of the math village in the mountains of Turkey. My father's name is Aziz Nesin, a well-known humorist, writer, and activist. He is known as a socialist and opposed to all governments. His priority was people, poor people of Turkey. I was in the United States at Irvine, and uh, my father died. I had to come back to Turkey to take uh, care of the foundation that he founded, Foundation for Children. There were around 30 children from 3 years old to 25 years old. Diapers, clean water, toothbrushing, accounting. For someone who spent all his time thinking about mathematics, I came back to Turkey and suddenly I had to think about everyday life's problems. The United States didn't need me, but Turkey needs me. I can come here and make a change. I can change people one by one. So I looked around Turkey and I tried to find out what was missing. I found out that what was missing was the elite education, high level education. I made up a very, very high level, very ambitious program. Actually, this was the beginning of the math village because the students were not ready. They were not thinking. They didn't know how to think. So first I took them to my house in the evenings. I took them to the foundation. Every year I organized a summer school in a different part of Turkey. This changed their life. Then I decided we should have our own place, because it was very difficult to organize these summer schools. We picked uh, Şevince because Sevan Nişanyan, my friend, was here. And he was going to build the village. Sevan is also Armenian, openly harsh to the government. Every time we, we were together, we'd make uh, plans of math village. Without his uh, courage and without his ability, the math village wouldn't exist. I had only $20,000 maybe, but we had uh, volunteers, children of the foundation, uh, my students, other students, my own children, sleeping outside, cooking outside, doing a few hours of lecturing and then working. 2007, we started the construction. 21st or 22nd of July, the gendarmes came to close down the math village. They sealed the village, actually. And we went to the forest, since it's forbidden to be in the village. It was a cemetery, horse cemetery. There was bones of horses. Five days later, the, the gendarmes came again. They said, we want you out of the forest also. This was it. This was, and then, then I had to react. I had a diary about the math village. I went public. And this was... A, big news in Turkey. We became famous in one day. We went back to the village. We took the seals off. And people, simple people, gave money to my dream. We collected around $150,000. Sevan went to jail. He didn't have lawyers. He didn't care about these things. I was lucky. They found small problems with the, with the, with the case, and uh, I was acquitted. I want the students to change when they arrive here, that they meet with some, something else, with some other world, their own world, not, not someone else's world. Each class lasts for two hours. Dördüncü boyda geçeceğim. After lunch, they have duties like peeling potatoes, watering plants, or whatever. And then at four o'clock, we start again classes. 
I say to the students, don't try to solve the problem. Try to understand the problem. If you try to understand the problem, the, then the answer will jump, jump out of the, of the sheet. Don't try to solve it. Don't go after the answer. Just try to understand the problem. I'm teaching them the answer is the least important. The importance is the idea, why. What which had to be done? I never had second thoughts. You know, I was, of course, afraid of going to jail and so on, but I never considered the possibility of not doing this, stopping it. This had to be done. There was no second chance. Matt Village had no second chance. It had to be born. It had to exist. We now call to the stage Ali Nessin, winner of the Lilavati Prize. And so we now continue with a few words from Professor Mori, president of the IMU. The emphasis uh, the company founding this prize hoped to be able to send an officer to represent them, but in the end, schedule problems prevented uh, this. Instead, Mr. Narayana Muruti, the founder of Infosys and the chairman of their board, ask me to read the following statement. On behalf of all of us at Infosys, I'd like to congratulate Professor Ali Nessin on winning the Lilavati Prize for 2018. Ali's love for the subject, his public spiritedness, and his dogged perseverance in building something concrete that symbolizes it is an example to us all he has crystallized his passion for the subject by building the amazing math village in his homeland, Turkey. This utopian village allows students of different ages to congregate the, and to learn uh, what they love, not just from instructors, but from each other too. When they go back from the village at the, from from the program at the village, I'm sure their experience will inspire their peers 
and excite their curiosity about it. In this way, the effect of Professor Nessin's work is amplified. He is therefore the perfect choice for the winner of the Lilavati Prize sponsored by Infosys, which is given not just for expertise in mathematics, but for public outreach. Congratulations again, Professor Nessin. Thank you, Professor Mori. Um, we'd now like to, in order to present the plans for the next International Congress of Mathematicians in 2022, we invite to the stage Professor Stas Smirnov and Professor Andrei Okunkov. But first, Professor Mori is going to say a few words. <laughs> to me, uh, surprise is enjoyment. <laughs> so I'm supposed to uh, make a report uh, uh, up, uh, till the, the future about the future IMU. So the ICM 2018 has almost come to its end. So there will still uh, various, uh, there will be still various IMU activities uh, after the ICM, and let me tell you a little bit about them, since IMU Secretary General Helga Holden already made a detailed status report in the opening ceremony. In July 2019, a new executive committee, EC, will take over. And the rest of uh, year 2018 is a transition period when the old and new ECs will work together. The new president, Carlos Kenny of USA, has participated in the IMU committee meetings as an observer, as decided by IMU General Assembly 2014. Watching the way Carlos participated in the IMU activities, I fully believe that he will make a great president in every respect, together with the incumbent uh, Secretary General Helge Holden. In addition, Nalini Josi of Australia and Loizo Nongha of South Africa will take office as vice presidents. And we have also new members at the large of the executive committee, Luigi uh, Ambrosio of Italy, Andrei Okunkov of Russia, Paolo Piccioni of Brazil, Arti Ramadas of India, Gang Tian of China, and Junta Zigra of Germany. I will still be attending the executive committee meetings, but with, noting, uh, with no voting rights. We also have new members for the International Commission on the History of Mathematics, ICHM. And new members will soon be added to the Committee on Electronic Information and Communication, CEIC, and International Committee for Women in Mathematics, CWM. All this information will be found on the new IMU homepage, mathunion.org. The new members of the Commission for Developing Countries, I would like to introduce explicitly. They are President Dipendra Prasad of India, Secretary for Policy Olga Gil Medurano of Spain, Secretary for Grant Alf Onshus of Colombia, and members at large. At the General Assembly, the IMU created the Structure Committee chaired by former President Razuro uh, Lovas, uh, which decides the structure of the next ICM so that the Program Committee can concentrate on the selection of the plenary and invited speakers. Taking advantage of the occasion of this ICM, we have already started the preparation. Prior to the ICM, 
CWM organized the World, Women for, uh, World Meeting for Women in Mathematics, WM Square, here in ICM venue, while the, the GA General Assembly ended in Sao Paulo on the day before. Uh, for the year 2022, both GA and ICM will take place in St. Petersburg, and the organization of WM Square will hopefully will be easier. That's what I wanted to tell you about IMU after the ICM. Thank you, Thank you Professor Mori. <laughs> and now, the moment you've been waiting for, to, uh, to learn about what's going to be happening in 2022, I invite to the stage Professor Stas Smirnov and Professor Andrei Okonkov. Thank you. Start with the movie. Uh, start the movie, please. Salute our Brazilian colleagues on putting together an amazing ICM, and um, this, this, and uh, while they have every reason to celebrate, our, our team has a lot of work ahead of us, and um, to signal our um, happiness and indeed impatience to take on this work, uh, Stas and I decided to wear our work clothes to this ceremony. <laughs> so. Um, so maybe a few things. For many of you, uh, this would be probably the first visit to Russia if you, uh, as you go on a, on a trip to a new destination. Sometimes it's only human to be a little nervous. So uh, it, what I want to say is, is one thing that uh, will make your arrival to Russia very easy is that um, 
the registration tag for the ICM will work just like the fan ID for the World Cup. So many of you watched the World Cup this summer, and nearly a million people came. And uh, the way this works is that this replaces not only your visa, but also a public transit ticket and many other things. So this is, um, and out of this minimal people that came, uh, everybody was very happy with how this worked. And this, this transportation is detailed on this slide. is is very modern in St. Petersburg. It also was, has been tested uh, during the World Cup extensively. Uh, so we really want to make ICM experience for everyone. And uh, we budgeted full support for 1,000 mathematicians from developing countries. And uh, together with our colleagues from other countries and with IMU, we'll make this seamless as possible uh, selection of uh, these colleagues and their arrival and trip to Russia and cover all, all the needs. We also want to increase the younger generation participation in the ICM and we budgeted the work with support for at least 1,300 young mathematicians. And the way it will work, we'll try to do it jointly with our colleagues from the National Science Foundation and Mass Societies from other countries. They will help us selecting people from their country. Uh, paying their travel cost, we on, in return will cover all the local cost for at least 1,300 younger mathematicians. So it's important for this initiative to get the word early so it's properly organized and uh, you should keep track of our website. We also want to make it accessible uh, in the way of the science, so we'll uh, try to plan more accessible lectures and try to uh, organize preparatory courses before ICM and during the ICM so the at least plenary lectures are more accessible. And also I want to say that St. Petersburg, my home city, is uh, second biggest city in Russia, fourth biggest in Europe, and it's a cosmopolitan city of five million people, and visitors have always, always been very welcome uh, there. It's very diverse in culture, religion, and uh, nationality, so uh, everyone will feel welcome there. So uh, both uh, Russia and uh, neighboring countries, especially Baltic country, hold a uh, great potential for hosting uh, the ICMs. Uh, sorry, the ICM satellite events in in places of uh, great historical significance and stunning natural beauty. And we urge our colleagues to think about potential uh, satellite events. And in general, we think planning the ICM should be already already the planning stage should be a, a great chance for to further context contacts between. Uh, the Russian mathematicians and their colleagues worldwide. And uh, Russia is very renowned for its activities in uh, scientific outreach and polarization of mathematics, and we want to redouble our efforts. Uh, so in particular, 2022 will be officially declared the year of mathematics in Russian Federation, uh, which will result to reaching out to millions of uh, school children, students, and just curious people with a multitude of events taking place during this year, before, after, and during the Congress. Uh, and we hope to have an impact comparable to that of 2008, which was the year of mathematics in Germany. And we certainly need your expertise and uh, ideally involvement to generate enough momentum so these popularization efforts will spread uh, beyond Russia. Uh, and uh, in particular, as there is an uh, initiative to translate some of our excellent outreach material. For example, here you, have, you see three of the volumes of the Quant Journal, which runs for, uh, well, almost 50 years now, which is journal mostly about mathematics and physics, but also other natural sciences. So we plan to tra translate this treasure trove of information in other languages, and this will need your help. But in, once again, Russia has a very strong tradition of polarizing mathematics. For example, if you're wondering, this picture downstairs is Kumagorov uh, talking to students of the high school he has organized at the Moscow State University. So we hope that the impact of the Congress will go beyond just the mathematical scientists, but also for, will be a positive impact for general public in Russia and elsewhere. And uh, we hope to see you all and many more colleagues in St. Petersburg in 2022. Please come. Thank you very much for that invitation from Professor Smirnov and Professor Okunov, and we wish you all success on the next edition, and see you in St. Petersburg. And now, uh, for the final prize that's going to be given at the Congress, uh, we'd like to present the IMPA and SBM Journalism Prize, and pass the microphone to Marcelo Viana, 
and to Paolo Pisciano. Thank you very much. Uh, I think one of the most important legacies of organizing the Congress of the whole build-up to this moment uh, was the fact that we succeeded in getting much closer to our colleagues in communication, to the press, journals, television, radio, and IMPA and SVM decided that that was an extremely positive development that we should um, stabilize and make more institutional. And with that in mind, uh, we decided to create a journalism prize in two categories to be awarded periodically and to have the first, uh, the, the first edition of this prize handed out here at the closing ceremony of ICM. The two categories are science popularization and uh, mathematics, of course. So in each, in each one of these categories, the jury has selected five fi uh, finalists uh, according to a material that was published in uh, the, any of uh, various media. And we have uh, most of them here today with us. Uh, and uh, those who are not present were, have been represented by colleagues. So we are going to start the award ceremony for the IMPA SBM uh, Journalism Prize, starting with the category Science Popularization. So uh, will we please post the um, list of finalists? So these are the finalists, and we are going And we are now going to call them to the stage, starting with the honorable mentions in the category science popularization, Mariana Lima from uh, newspaper Dia Plus, and Renato Grandelli from uh, O Globo. Please. Third place in science popularization, Barbara Souza, CBN Radio. Second place, still in science popularization, Bernardo Esteves from Piauí Magazine. And the winner in the category uh, science popularization is Gabriel Alves from uh, Folha de São Paulo newspaper. I am now pleased to announce the IMPA SBM 2018 uh, Journalism Prize in the category of Mathematics. We start with... Uh... Oh, okay, yes. Ah, yes. yes. So these are the finalists on the screen. Um, <clears throat> Let us start with uh, honorable mentions to uh, Paulo Saldanha Erika Fraga from the journal Folha de São Paulo and Paula Martini from the radio station CBN.
Grazie Erika. Grazie Erika. Okay, in third place, uh, let's, uh, let us welcome Denisi Casatti of the uh, journal, uh, journal of the University of Sao Paulo. Second place uh, is by Paulo Saldanha uh, from the Folha de São Paulo. And the winner of the 2018 um, IMPA SBM Journalist Prize for the category of mathematics is uh, Maria Clara Vieira Isabela Isidro from the magazine Veja. Thank you to Professor Marcelo Viano, Professor Paolo Picciano, and all the winners of the IMPERS SPM Journalism Prize. Thank you. The jury has also decided to give a special Or Concours Prize um, for a team, to a team from TV Global Network, and I should perhaps explain that. Uh, about a year ago, we were contacted by Global TV Network with um, a rather surprising proposal. They wanted to have news about math given on primetime sh sh news show, on the main uh, news show in the evening, uh, during a whole week. And they came up with this proposal, we discussed, and that converged to a series of episodes about mathematics presented to Brazilian families all across the country. I think in total is almost half an hour of television time devoted by mathematics by Global TV Network. Uh, they uh, kindly uh, offered to provide us with a little summary of that, which we are now going to show to you after we thank the winners uh, again and let them go back to their seats. May we have the global video, please? And then uh, afterwards we will call the Matemática team. Matemática tão temida pela complicação está presente nas coisas mais simples da vida. Você gosta de números? Não? Então vamos passar um dia sem eles. Os problemas nascem junto com o Sol. Ele é o único ponteiro do nosso único relógio. Sem os números, o homem não inventou as horas. Até quem detesta a matemática já percebeu que quando aparecem... Os números estão aí para nos ajudar. O matemático Marcelo Viana é o diretor do IMPA e aceitou o desafio. Vai resolver o problema da nossa casa sem números. Marcelo, bem-vindo. Tudo bom, Marcelo? Tudo bem, tudo bem. Obrigado por ter vindo. Viu? Obrigado. Foi fácil chegar? Olha, foi meio complicado, porque não tinha número, né? Ainda bem que é possível fazer matemática sem números, porque matemática com pizza é muito melhor. Você faz mais ou menos quantas pizzas por semana? 
Uma média de uns 1.400. Setecentas e setenta mil pizzas que você tem, Cristiano. É pizza demais, né? Caramba! Não vejo a hora de chegar na pizza do milhão. Eu quase lá. Mais uns três, quatro aninhos, você chega na pizza do milhão, você liga pra mim, me convida, porque alguém começa aqui. <risos> Pode deixar. Zero oitocentos, hein? Zero oitocentos. Pra entender os logaritmos, nada melhor do que a escuridão e a luz. Uma pequena intensidade de iluminação já faz muita diferença. Por exemplo, eu que não estava enxergando nada, já consigo ver o matemático Marcelo Viana. Tudo bem, Marcelo? E um palco iluminado pela matemática não pode ficar vazio. Pronto. Aí estão frações invisíveis se espalhando pelo ar. As notas musicais são números em movimento. Onde está a matemática? Às vezes a gente acha que ela é tão difícil que vive escondida nos lugares mais improváveis. E de repente, surpresa! Sem saber, você pode estar pisando na matemática todos os dias. O bondinho só chega até o alto porque percorre uma estrada construída pela matemática, a catenária. Essa curva é linda, né? Você veja, é uma curva que é criada pela natureza porque é a curva que melhor distribui a tensão, o peso do cabo ao longo de toda a extensão. A matemática é a porta e o elevador. Marcelo, a gente encontra a matemática nos lugares mais inesperados, né? Esse, esse aí bateu todos os recordes. <risos> So I call to the stage the team that produced this uh, series of episodes, Pedro Bassan, Lizia Nassar, Rogério Lima, Tatiana Neves, Zeca Esperança, Renato Portronieri e Eduardo Seabra. Thank you to Professor Marcelo and to the team from Globo. And now we really are reaching the end. I'd just like to call Professor Shugifumi Mori, President of the International Mathematics Union, for his final thank you. Professor Mori. The ICM has come to its end. Could you enjoy it or learn something from it? Well, uh, in this hall, you can't answer. But at least I myself uh, enjoyed the great opportunity to listen to the, the top uh, researchers reaching out to us, uh, general mathematical audience in our language. I think this, especially feeling the atmosphere is the essence of ICM, and I hope you share my feelings too. Uh, I would like you to understand that ICM is a handmade event, so to speak, although it is a gigantic meeting with thousands of participants. Eight prize winners and about 200 plenary and invited speakers, including the NETA lecturer, greatly contributed to the academic success of the ICM. Public and special lectures and various panels, as well as short communications, posters, and exhibitions enriched the ICM. Chairs of the talks 
and panels made sure the events went smoothly and on time. Those are the people you, uh, you can see uh, on surface, but behind them, there are enormous number of people who made this ICM possible. ICM is a fruit of the collaboration of all the people involved, starting with the IMUEC, with the administrative staff of IMU Secretariat, program committee appointed panel committee, and worked together to select plenary and panel speakers, about 200 in total. Prize committees, Fields, Nevalina, Gauss, Chang, Lirabati, a NETA lecture, lecturer committee carefully chose the uh, recipients. I should not forget the nominators and referees who made the committee's work possible. Please join me in thanking them for their splendid contribution. These decisions were sent to the local organizers who practically planned and managed this wonderful Congress. Finally, the organizing committee of the ICM and IMUGA, uh, Chair Marcelo Viana, spent several years for the organization of the ICM. Sorry, I misled. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm. So they they carefully chose this wonderful conven convention center, Rio Centro, as the venue. They made the two years, 2017 and 2018, years of the Brazilian mathematics uh, for International Mathematical Olympiad 2017 and ICM 2018. This way, he managed the, to secure the planning of ICM, including even financial matters. I came here and witnessed the preparation of ICM in April 2017. As you know, this ICM had a few surprising incidents and Brazilian organizers from various institutions of Brazil and uh, USA, including IMPA, have over overcome and turned them into truly memorable events by their hard work. I would call it the resilience. Well, I must say that uh, I'm totally amazed at the so-called last five minutes strength of Brazilian friends. Please allow me to list only the key members of the organizing team while they, uh, there are uh, many more behind them uh, who deserve to be mentioned. Chair Marcelo Biana, IMPA. <laughs> Short communications and posters Alexander Albierto, <laughs> University of Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Proceedings, Boyan Siracobi, <laughs> Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> Women in Mathematics, Carolina Araujo, IMPA. Satellite events, Eduardo Teixeira, University of Central Florida. <laughs> Scientific program, Emmanuel Carnero, IMPA. <laughs> Travel grants, Enrique Bulschin, IMPA. Leo Intergenser, Jose Espina, IMPA. <laughs> oh, 
Organization and Coordination, Juliana Blessan Impa. <laughs> Volunteers, Maria Joan Hezenji, University of Fluminense. and Nelly Carvajal uh, Impa. <laughs> and I should stress uh, IMU General Assembly, Paolo Piccioni, uh, University of San Paolo. <laughs> Digital platform, Paolo Neide Souza, University of uh, California, Berkeley. <laughs> Electronic Information and Communication, Roberto Beuclea Impa. <laughs> Website Planning and Supervision, Roberto Imbozeiro Oliveira Impa. Please join me again in thanking Marcelo Vian and his team for the splendid work they have accomplished for the ICM. <laughs> Finally, I want to thank you all uh, participants who have come from all over the world. Your enthusiasm for mathematics was catalyst for the success of the 2018 International Congress of Mathematics in Rio de Janeiro. Thank you. And thank you to Professor Mori. And now, for the final words and the official closing of this ceremony, please welcome again Professor Marcelo Viana. Well, all, all that is good comes to an end, and 2018 ICM is over, but the greater tradition of the International Congress of Mathematicians lives on. See you all in St. Petersburg four years from now, and have safe trips back home. Thank you. <laughs>